Hi, this is Jesse Barnum. I'm the president of 360 Works, and I'm going to be doing a very quick run through on the setup process for Mirror Sync 2. I'm going to go quickly here, so if you're following along with your own file, just pause the demo video wherever you need to catch up, and then we'll keep going together. Okay, so what I'm going to start off with here is a new copy of the Tasks Starter solution that comes with uh, comes with FileMaker Pro. So I'm just starting totally from scratch. Uh, and I will get started by creating this file and uploading it to FileMaker Server. Uh, Mirror, FileMaker Server is required for MirrorSync. It works with FileMaker Server 11, 12, and 13. I'm using 12 in this example just because I haven't installed 13 on my uh, laptop computer yet. So now that I've got the file uploaded, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide FileMaker Server. Uh, I don't need this file on my desktop anymore, so I'm just going to throw that in the trash. Okay, and now I'm going to actually launch the MirrorSync client. This is something that you access in your browser. It's a Java Web Start application, so uh, you download the JNLP file, and I'm going to click Open here to start it up. That uh, will launch the MirrorSync client, and the first screen that's going to take me to is just a welcome screen telling me, hey, you should really read the instructions. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to log in with the username and password that I set when I installed MirrorSync, and I'm going to immediately create a new configuration. So the first thing to pick is what type of server am I syncing with, which is in this case FileMaker Server. But MirrorSync 2 does support Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, and Oracle. I'm picking which database I'm going to sync with, and uh, my tasks database is not here. If I don't see it, it's telling me that I need to check the FMXML extended privilege. So let me go do that now. I'm going to switch over to FileMaker, open my file back up, and once I get this file open, I'm going to uh, enable the FMXML extended privilege on there. I'm going to want to enable it for all the users that will be using MirrorSync. In this particular demo file, I'm just using the, the admin account that came with, Mirror, uh, came with this task template, but I could have a whole bunch of non-admin accounts that all had that FMXML extended privilege enabled. Now I'm back in here, and this time when I click Choose Database, I should see it in my list. There it is. There's the task database. So if you're, not, if you're setting up MirrorSync and you don't see it in the list, that's the solution for that problem. Now MirrorSync is going to guide me through three copy and paste operations. There's a table first, so it's been put on my clipboard. I'm going to switch over to FileMaker, go to Manage Databases, and just paste that table. If you don't have FileMaker Advanced, you're not going to be able to paste this, but there's instructions on our website for how to do it with regular copy of FileMaker Pro. Notice as I do each step, I get a green check mark, and that's MirrorSync telling me that that, script was, that step was successful. So now it's put some scripts on my clipboard. I'm going to go to the script maker, and I'm just going to paste those as well. And so there's three scripts inside a folder that get pasted. I get my check mark showing that it's, that it's done. And now I copy the MirrorSync layout. And it's important to paste this onto the existing MirrorSync layout that got created when I pasted the table, not create a new MirrorSync layout. So I'm just going to go to Layout Mode here. I'll get rid of all the things that are currently on this layout, all the default items. Get rid of this header. And now I'll just paste. So there's my uh, mirror sync layout elements. And the last thing I'm going to do is just resize this so that uh, the layout will size to fill my window whatever size it is. And switch to browse. And there we go. It looks good. So now I've got my green check marks. Uh, I'm almost done. But there is an optional step here that if you're syncing with FileMaker Pro or Go, it's telling me that I can create a button that, uh, linking to that mirror sync script don't have to do this if I want users to just run it from the scripts menu, but it's a little nicer if we go ahead and just switch to layout mode and stick a button on there for them to just click that button easily. So I'll just copy this existing button, attach it to the MirrorSync script, which by the way is currently empty. There's nothing in that script yet. That'll come later. Change the title here. Let's have it say sync. No, let's have it say run run sync. A little more verby. Copy that button for another layout. And switch over to this layout, go into layout mode, and we'll paste that button in. I could put this on every single layout in the solution. Just it depends on wherever I want the user to be able to trigger the sync from. Now, like I said, the script is empty, so if I run it right now, it won't do anything. But now I finished that optional step and I'm ready to go on. Now it's telling me to create layouts for the tables that I want to sync. 
Each table needs to have three fields in it, a primary key, a creation timestamp, and a modification timestamp. Uh, and then I will need to create the layouts for each table that I want to sync and just put all the fields on them. So first let me take a look at my field definitions and see what I have to work with. In this particular demo, that our solution that comes from FileMaker, I've got a primary key. I do like setting not empty validations on my primary key, so I'm just going to change that. But I don't have a creation timestamp or a modification timestamp. I'm going to add those right now. They're just normal timestamp fields in FileMaker that I auto enter a creation timestamp or a modification timestamp for. By the way, while I'm doing this, let me mention something. If you are, um, if you have different users in different time zones, be sure to read our documentation because there's some tricks you can do for the modification timestamp to account for that so that everyone uses the server timestamp instead of their own timestamp. So I'm just copying these two modification timestamp fields and I'm pasting them in the three tables that I want to sync here. This solution has three tables, assignees, attachments, and tasks. So now all three tables have creation timestamps, but uh, two of my tables don't have a primary key. I'm going to create an ID field. I'm going to use a regular FileMaker serial number. Um, and again, I like to set the not empty validation. And now that I've done that once, I'm just going to copy this field and paste it into the other assignees table that did not have a primary key either. Okay, so now I've set up all of my required fields. I've got a primary key and a creation timestamp and a modification timestamp in all three. And my next step here is to create a layout for each table. So I've got the three tables. I'm going to create three layouts. I'm going to get started right now. Creating these layouts are very simple. All you need to do is just create a new layout, name it. You can name it anything you want. I like to name them all with sync at the beginning because it helps me find them easier. But if you have some other naming that you like, go ahead. You don't need to change anything on these layouts. If you're used to MirrorSync 1, you might remember that you had to delete certain fields in the layout. That's no longer necessary with MirrorSync 2. So that makes the setup process go very, very quickly. All fields, finish, and one more. We'll do attachments, name it. Move all, and done. That's the single most time consuming step in the mirror sync setup process is creating those layouts. And now we're done with that. Now it's telling me which database do you want to sync to. Mirror sync supports server to server sync, but in this case, I want to sync with FileMaker Pro between FileMaker Pro and server. I'm going to check off. It's, it's asking me which layouts is it that I want to sync. I'm going to tell it those three layouts I just created. It's checking the things on those layouts. I'm going to enter in an email address so that if anything goes wrong in a sync, I'll get an email sent to this address telling me. That's especially important for server-to-server -server syncs. I don't have different users in different time zones, so I click no there. Um, I've got options here for primary keys, for field merging in the case of conflicts, and if there is a conflict, I can have, I'm just going to say, I want the user to decide what the winner is, but there are other options you can pick there as well. In this screen, MirrorSync has automatically detected my primary keys. That's partly based on setting that not empty validation. That helps MirrorSync tell what my primary keys are. It auto detects the modification and the creation timestamp, and it can tell the difference between the two. And now, new in MirrorSync 2, it automatically calculates my foreign keys for me. In MirrorSync 1, this needed to be set manually. I don't have any foreign keys for my tasks table, so I'm just going to skip over this. And here is kind of our version of the relationship graph showing you what your keys are so you can check and make sure they work correctly. That's it. Um, it saved my configuration and the last thing to do is just copy and paste my script steps for the main sync. It's written the script, it's put them on the clipboard. I need to paste them in the existing mirror sync script, not create a new script. And so I'm going to go to that empty existing mirror sync script and paste. Okay, and that writes my sync script for me. I'm going to save the changes. I'm almost done. Um, I'm done with all the required steps. There is one optional step that I'm going to go ahead and do here, which is that uh, you want to set the mirror sync setup script as your startup script in your solution. That's not a requirement, but what it does is it makes it so that the first time they open the file, it'll run the sync. You don't need to tell your users to run a sync before they start making changes this way. 
So I'm going to go to the existing startup script and I'm just going to add my perform script onto the end of that. And I'm going to call that mirror sync setup script so that it's always going to run after they uh, do whatever, after the file does all of its other startup script stuff. And now when the users download the initial file, it's going to sync for them. They don't have to remember to sync it first. So now I am done with the setup and all that's left to do is send an offline copy to my users. Um, I'll let you read this later. You can pause the video and read all of these options. But the approach we recommend here is the download link button. So I'm going to show you that now. I'm going to click this download database button. I'm going to hit the create link button. And that's going to create, uh, it's a single file solution. So I picked that here. And this is going to create a link, just a URL that I can email to my users so they can download this file with no admin setup required by me at all. I enter my FileMaker server admin credentials. I tell it I want a full copy of the database. I've got an option for a clone too. And it just copied that to my clipboard. And let's test it here. I'm going to open a new tab in Safari. I'm going to paste that URL. And when I run this URL, what it's going to do is it's going to go to FileMaker server, create a copy of that database for me, and download it. So let's open that up. And if you recall, I set that startup script so it's automatically running my first sync as soon as I open the file. It's not going to do this every time I open the file, just the first time if I have not yet synced the file. There is no admin password, so I'm going to leave that blank. That initial sync finished in a little over one second. And now if I put these files side by side, I've got my server hosted file on the left and my offline copy on the right. They're identical at the moment. I've run my initial sync. Now I'm going to create a new record on the offline file. Let's say a mirror sync video tutorial. That's my to-do list for today. I'm going to hit my handy button that I added. That syncs up to the server in about half a second. There I see it on the server. Now I'm going to jump over to that in the server, change something on the record. We're done now. And I'm going to Go back to my list so I can see them side by side. Notice that this says in progress. I'll run the sync. It takes another half a second. Copies that change over and I see that it's complete. So that's the entire setup process from beginning to end in Mirror Sync 2. Um, we're going to post more videos with more advanced uh, setup instructions and conflict resolution and customization and mobile files. But this should give you a quick start on how to use Mirror Sync. Thanks a lot.